Hello everyone. Today we are going to study about covered smut. In the last video lecture, we had studied about smut disease in brief and also we studied about the difference between the loose smut and the covered smut and some of the uh, organism which causes this disease and also we studied about the loose smut in case of wheat in detail. So today let us study about covered smut. This covered smut in case of wheat it's also called as bunt disease. It's also called as bunt disease and it's also called as stinking smut or it is also called as hill bunt of wheat. This is one of the disease which is being exclusively identified first time in India in Bihar. It was first reported. The name stinking smut is due to the, uh, the infected grain. Once you just take out that infected grain and once you just crush it, it stinks like a rotten fish. That's the reason it's called as stinking smut or it's also called as hill burnt of wheat. This particular disease is being usually found in the wheat as well as in barley you can come across this covered smut. Once again I will repeat the difference between the loose smut and the covered smut. As we all know the smut is one of the kind of the disease where you can find the symptom visible pathogen on the infected part. The infected part may be the entire plant. It is a systemic infection. The What is the meaning of the systemic infection? That is, the infection takes place to the entire part of the plant. That's called as systemic infection. Localized, we have one more kind of infection called as localized infection, wherein which in case of localized infection, wherever the infect only the infected part is being showing the symptom or the only the infected part or the infected tissue is being affected that's called as localized infection whereas this is one of the kind of the disease which is is systemic infection however we could see the disease symptom especially in our economically important part of the plant that is the wheat if, for example if it is a wheat the grain is an important economically important part which the origin of this grain is from the ovary that is the ovary gets infected by this pathogen. Here in case of loose smut where in which you can find the the ovary the wall of the ovary or the smut spores which would have which would have been found inside the ovary is being dehized or the ovary and wall or the thin layer which has been covered over on the mass of this spores gets dispersed or they are released outside that's called as the loose smut wherever in this covered smut, the ovarian tissue, the ovary where it, where it has got infected, here the smut spores are not released at all. These smut sori or the mass of the sori is being found intact and it is being over, covered over by a thin membrane and also the ovarian wall as also protects this particular smut spores to be intact. The intact the intact uh, smut spore is due to the uh, the deposition of some lipid because of this deposition you can find the spores are found to be intact. You can find uh, I mean, uh, so that is the reason it's called as covered smut that is the spores are not released however the spores have been covered over firmly by the the wall of the ovary as well as from the base even the glooms as well as the spikelets also help in the covering of this particular uh, uh, mass of the spores called as teleospores that's the reason it's called as what covered smut so today let us study about the covered smut in case of wheat the pathogen which is going to infect the wheat plant and which cause the covered smut is Tilichia fortida. This is one of an organism which causes covered smut in case of wheat. However, Eustilago hardy is the one which causes the smut disease that is covered smut in case of barley. Remember, Tilichia fortida is the one which causes 
covered smudge in case of wheat very important for the point of examination remember burnt disease burnt disease is being caused due to tilichia fetida is the organism or the pathogen which causes burnt disease eustilago eustilago triticae is the one which cause loose smudge that you have to remember as we all know these are the group of organism which belongs to the subdivision residuum mycotina class teleomycetes and the order uridinales the family uridinaceae and the genus which we are going to study is called as tilichia and the species is fetida and eustilago hordi also belongs to the same systematic position coming to the symptoms of the covered smudge disease as i was mentioning it's a seed borne disease you can find the infected propagule inside the seed infecting the embryo or these propagules can be present on the surface of the seed the infected plants are few cm shorter than that of a healthy plant that is the infected plants are quite dwarf plant appears the infected plant appears bluish green to grayish green in color exact symptom can be found can be shown only on the head of the infected plant so till the plant grow till the plant produce inflorescence the symptom cannot be seen at all apart from the length of the plant or the color of the plant no much difference between the healthy plant and the infected plant can be observed only once the head formation happen then only you can see the distinct symptom where the head of the infected plant they are bluish green in color rather than that of yellowish green in color whereas the healthy plant the inflorescence of the head of the healthy plant is yellowish green in color however the infected plant there it is bluish green in color if you can see the image which i have put up on the left hand side of the uh, slide you could see some of the the plants which can be seen if you observe each of the gynoecium part of this inflorescence you can see the ovary uh, inside which you can find the deposition or the accumulation of black colored teleospores and also they are not yellowish in color you could see some greenish bluish greenish or the bluish green coloration of the inflorescence can be observed and the glooms if you also could concentrate on this particular image you can see the glooms that is the entire flower entire flower they get spreaded or the glooms get spreaded from that of a central axis of the panicle so if you see the inflorescence inflorescence will have a central axis inside it has got a central axis and surrounding the central axis you can see the formation of all these flowers and all so the infected head in where in which the flowers or the glooms whatever it is been called they get separated or they get spreaded to a greater angle from that of a central axis when compared to that of a healthy plant and the infected kernel that is the infected seed of of such plant they are quite thick and they are shorter when compared to that of a normal healthy seeds they are thick and they are short and the matured infected kernel when it is broken when it is broken you can see the seed or the kernel is full of sooty powdery mass of fungal spore and such spore is producing or that that particular infected grain is producing a odor of decaying fish this may be due to the presence of volatile compound called as trimethyl amine in the spore mass and during harvest that is during the process of thrashing what is this thrashing that is the process in where in which they apply some pressure on this particular crop especially on the inflorescence so that the grains get separated from that of a other part of the plant once during this thrashing since the pressure has been applied on this grain the infected grains the wall of this infected grains ruptures once the ruptures all the spores sooty blackish spores 
gets dispersed and they are released into the air and they form a large cloudy uh, a large cloud on that particular field wherever the thrashing process is happening these are some of the symptoms of covered smut in case of wheat so let us talk or let us study about the disease cycle of uh, the covered smut uh, as i was mentioning this is one of a seed borne disease that is the propagule if you please uh, carefully see the life cycle as i don't have the pointer over here please just make a note so if you can see the smutted uh, wheat head just after that we could see the image of some seeds here we can see some healthy seeds and some of the seeds which are blackish in color those are actually the smutted kernels or smutted seeds so once you just break it open you could see the mass of spores sooty spores or the telio spores which you can find on this particular seeds if such kind of spores if such kind of spores if it is being found contaminated with that of a healthy seed the spores are carried carried along with the healthy seeds also the spores make it deposited on the surface of these healthy seeds so once that kind of seeds if we are going to sow and if we try to grow the wheat plant what happen so such wheat plant sorry wheat uh, such seeds start germinating and they start producing the seedling at the same time the spores which are the telio spores which are present on the surface of these seed even they start to germinate how they germinate the as i was mentioning in my previous class or in my previous video the telio spores are round in shape they are dicaryotic and made up of two wall layer exine and intine exine is rough or it is spiny so here this particular telio spore which is dicaryotic undergoes the process of karyogamy to form a diploid zygote carefully observe the image kindly observe the image so once again i will repeat the telio spore which is dicaryotic where you can find this telio spore which has been it has been found on the surface of the germinating or a infected seed so during the process of the uh, pro, during the process of the germination these telio spores which are found on the seed they also start germinating before the process of germination this dicaryotic telio uh, telio spores the nucleus which are present there undergo a process of karyogamy the fusion of nucleus happen to form a diploid zygote this zygote germinate this zygote germinate and at the same time it undergoes the the process of meiosis it also undergoes the process of meiosis and it germinates the exine ruptures in time produces a germ tube and such germ tube which has been formed it's called as basidium this basidium pinches out the primary sporidia see here in the, the karyogamy has happened and the zygote has been formed this particular zygote after the process of rupturing of the exine in time germinate and produces basidium and the nucleus which is present the diploid nucleus which is present inside this zygote undergoes the process of meiosis these nucleus enters into this basidium at the same time basidium at its terminal region produces a sterigma through this sterigma you can see the formation of primary sporidia here we are not calling it as a basidia they are mycologists they are calling it as a sporidia later what happens to this primary sporidia the primary sporidia two primary sporidia of opposite strain undergoes a process of fusion they undergoes a process of fusion to form a h shaped structure so here you can find h shaped structure later from this h shaped structure you can see the formation of the the 
the that is this primary sporidium after the process of the fusion that is you can call it as a somatogamy the fusion of two vegetative cell happen that is only the fusion of the cytoplasm happen but not the no, not the fusion of the nucleus so from this primary sporidium the secondary sporidium which is binucleated is pinched out you can see over here the binucleated secondary sporidium is pinched out from a fused primary sporidium so later this secondary sporidium germinate so once this secondary sporidium or uh, has been formed they start germinating and they produce dikaryotic hyphae so all this process starting from the teleospore undergoing karyogamy zygote formation basidiospore formation primary sporidia formation fusion of the primary sporidia and the formation of the secondary sporidium and the germination of the secondary sporidium formation of dikaryotic hyphae all this process are happening on the surface of the infected wheat grain so once the the secondary sorry uh, the dikaryotic hyphae has been formed such dikaryotic hyphae the mycelium penetrate inside the seed directly so here it is you can see the infection they can uh, uh, the germ tube which has been produced they can either penetrate directly into this particular seed in my future classes i am going to talk about the host parasite interactions where i will be teaching how what is the mechanism of penetration of such kind of pathogen how actually uh, the different uh, which are the different enzymes involved or the hormones involved and all those we are going to uh, study in detail about the host parasite interaction later just now just understand that here the mycelium the uh, the dikaryotic mycelium which has has been formed from the secondary sporidium they directly enters enters into the into the they penetrate inside the seedling see developing seedling this is the tissue of the developing seedling it enters into the developing seedling and once it enters into the developing seedling it enters into the all the part of the seedling but however they try to concentrate more on the apical region why they try to concentrate more on the apical region because that is the region where actually the inflorescence production that is the panicle production happen formation happen that's the reason they start to uh, penetrate i mean concentrate more on the tip region and once they enter inside the host tissue of the seedling they can be intercellular they, that is these mycelium are found in between the space of the two cells that's called as intercellular they can produce osterian they can absorb the nutrition and they grow so later at that particular later as the seedling is growing uh, the plant would have formed at the same time the you can see the formation of uh, the inflorescence or the head formation happens once the head has been formed even the mycelium also enters inside the head they also enter uh, enters into the uh, in, into the flowers into the gynecium all the parts of the plant they or their target is to enter inside the ovary ovary is the part of the gynecium of a flower uh, so they enter into the gynecium that is they will enter inside the ovary so ovary now that is the part of the plant which was supposed to produce the kernel that is the part of the plant which was supposed to produce the wheat grain that is the part of the plant where you can find uh, the uh, the nutritive tissues like endosperm you can find mucilus where this pathogen try to utilize all this nutrition once the nutrition is been exhausted the mycelium gets modified or they get transformed themselves into the oval or elliptical shaped or round shaped teleospores round shaped teleospores are formed where this tele the spore or the spore balls uh, which you can find inside the ovary have been protected by the ovarian tissue the ovary which was supposed to produce the grain in that it has been replaced by the smut spores once you just squeeze the or uh, 
free such kind of uh, the infected grain or the infected ovary you can see the formation the release of the black sooty teleospores or the smut spores are released so such again such smut spores so here you can see the symptoms of the healthy as well as the infected plant the healthy plant they are uh, yellowish green in color and uh, they have produced the green and all whereas the smutted plant where you can see they are quite dwarf and also you can see the central axis glooms which has been get separated from that of a central axis and each of the ovary over there has been uh, occupied by the smut spores so once such kind of weed seeds has been harvested once the spores is being you know contaminated with that of a healthy seeds once such healthy seeds has been sown the cycle can continue so now how to control this disease the best method of controlling this disease is using certified smut free seed as we tell prevention is better than cure that's the reason better to go for certified smut free seeds crop rotation field sanitation field sanitation that is keeping the field clean with with devoid of such previously infected if there are any such kind of uh, the uh, the infected uh, part of the plant or anything else it has to be the uh, it has to be taken out or the removed and it has to be burnt into ashes that is this indicates that the field has to be clean that is called as field sanitation and seed treatment since this is one of a seed born disease seed, seed is the one which is which we are going to sow from that the plant has to come if the seed itself has been contaminated with such kind of smut spores obviously those spores which are present on the seeds they infect and we, you can uh, see the results so better to go for seed treatment seed treatment with copper sulfate two percent formalin 1.1 is to 1 with water benzoate 0.3 percent Vita wax 0.2 percent, etc. There are many other kind of fungicides which has the ability of removing uh, this uh, kind of contamination on the uh, seed. They are uh, effective to control this uh, disease. And uh, other methods use of organomercurials like agrosan, sericin, benzoate 0.3 percent, Vita wax 0.2 percent use of disease resistant varieties this again prevention is better than the cure that is why prevent this pathogen by using disease resistant varieties like s227 pv118 hd2012 etc kalyan sona up2002 etc many of the disease resistant varieties are available better to grow or use such kind of disease resistant varieties so uh, uh, as i was mentioning the control measures the always better to go for disease resistant varieties or use of smut free seeds crop rotation field sanitation seed treatment and using of some of the fungicides gives the better results so these are some of the references which you can refer 